After the incident in the hall, Kyrie retreated quickly to the lunchroom, where she was quickly joined by her sister. Words still cannot express how many pieces Nami is heartbroken to when she saw her sister, defeated, bowed over at the table like a prisoner of war who had just admitted surrender. No words Nami could offer comforted her sister. Instead, she walked over and gave her a hug, which would be enough for now. So while Sora was talking to Tifa in the lunchroom, Kairi Nomura stared at Sora with such an intense hatred that could have lighted the entire room. She didn't understand his obsession for trying to make her life a living hell. All Kairi knew was the moment she met Sora, she knew he was bad news. The worst thing is, he seemed to get away with everything. She still did not believe he was able to rig her locker just as she thought of the idea to test it. Kairi turned back to her plate of food. She stared at it as if it could come to life and tell her that, Hey, maybe one day he'll leave you alone. Maybe one day, he'll just disappear. Yeah, right. Kairi thought as she lowered her head, uncertain of why she comes to school anymore. In her moodiness, she barely noticed Titus, Waka, Yuffie, and Riku coming in to join her. Hey Kairi, how are you feeling? Waka sat down. I'm okay. Well, not okay, but you know what I mean. What about you guys? Us? Yeah, we're, we're good. Tita said, casting a glance in Riku's direction, who didn't say anything. Falling into a silence that was alien to the chattering lunchroom, it was an odd thing if you were someone watching from afar. The popular one suddenly act like the outcast. I can't believe it. How did he know? Riku finally muttered, and Kairi nodded. I know. I only thought of testing the locker then and there. Riku looked at her apologetically. Actually, I meant how he knew about what I was planning for Vanille tonight. So much for the surprise. Waka pounded his hands on the table. Damn, Sora. Why is he always hounding on us like that? Nomine lifted her head up a little and said in a quiet voice. He is very rude. Titus folded his arms. He's rude to us. But he never picked on you, Nabine. Which was quite true. Sora had never really played any pranks on her. However, he wasn't exactly friendly to her either. He was gruff and paid very little attention to her. Nabine wasn't as vocal or stood out like her sister did. Maybe that's why Sora never harassed her. Was it because he only preyed on the people who were popular? As she mulled over this thought, a lone girl joined them at their table. I heard what Sora did in the halls today. The girl frowned. He got away with it again? I can't believe the teachers can't see through his lies, Aerith. It seems unfair you have to suffer. He never did anything to anyone. It's people like Sora who make school almost unbearable. I hate saying this. And I really do. But he's even worse than Cypher. Wait, Cypher intimidates every senior in the school. How is Sora worse? <sighs> Sora is feared by the juniors, seniors, and even the staff are a little intimidated by him. That's crazy, man. How can one guy be feared by the entire school? Sora is. Everyone in the school is scared of him. I wouldn't be surprised if Cypher praises Sora. Cypher taught Sora, him and his little group. Of course the teacher would want to praise his student. Cypher is proud of his accomplishments. Yuffie bitterly interjected, her nose scrunching up as if she could still smell the stink bomb still in her clothes. Somebody please tell me why on earth no one has suspended him yet. He never gets caught, Titus answered. And when he is cornered, he somehow manages to wring himself out of that one too. Personally, I just think most of the teachers are idiots and shouldn't even be teaching. You think that about all teachers, even Miss Larkin who gave you a C on your history exam. That... Titus pointed a finger at him. Has nothing to do with it. Well, not by much anyway. As much as I would love to rag on Titus on what he got in history. Yuffie grinned at that thought, but after that, her mood went sullen instantly. We need to figure out what to do with him, Sora. We can't just sit here and take his crap anymore. We could always strike back at him, Riku suggested. Titus and Waka turned warning looks to him and he amended himself. No, not like that. I mean, operate on his level. Strike at something he loves. Humiliate him. 
you know, give him a taste of his own medicine. How do we do that? It's not like we can go and ask his friends about Sora. They'll know what we're up to. He loves motorcycles. I've seen him race with dirt bikes on occasion. Maybe we can sabotage his bike? It won't work. The quiet voice of Nomine reminded the small group that she was still with them. They turned to her who had paused mid-sketch to continue. Sora loves bikes, as you said. He would be able to figure out someone sabotaged his bike before he even got on it. Well, true, but... And what if he did get on it? Aerith also added. What if he got into an accident, and the police figured out who it was? You'd all be arrested and your futures are ruined. I sympathize with you guys. I really do. But sticking to his level won't solve anything. Deep down the group knew the two girls were right, but they hated to admit it. To admit that they were truly powerless in this situation. They had too much riding on their futures to give up for a moment's worth of vengeance. Kairi looked across the lunchroom and didn't see Sora anymore, which was fine to her. However, it didn't change the hellhole that Sora was making for her. She wished that someday, someone would put the asshole in his place, but it didn't seem to happen. It was at that moment in which Kairi decided the world was a cruel place, a place where nobody would get what they deserved. After their little talk in the lunchroom, Sora decided that the break should be used for a more productive activity. No, not studying or anything academic. No, this productive activity involved machines that usually have two wheels, drove fast, and you don't even need to pedal them. Motorcycles. Sora loved motorcycles. He had a drift bike as well as his own cycle he couldn't wait for the day he could be on the road with. Sometimes during or after school he would get his dirt bike and race someone on the dirt pass, and that's just what he was doing now. During the school break, some of the juniors had brought their dirt bikes and placed them on the dirt pass just outside school property. Sora had done the same early this morning with the intention of joining the juniors in a race for, well, bragging rights and smiles from pretty girls. They used to bet money. Then they all came to the conclusion while about half the juniors had jobs, they spent most of that money on video games, sporting goods, and other little items. In other words, they were too damn broke to even bet a penny. That was okay though. The juniors had loads of ego to brag about, and there were many lovely ladies watching. That's what Sora was doing on this afternoon. In the time between classes and lunch, Sora approached his dirt bike and leaned on his bike. He gave a cocky smile to his competition as Tifa walked up in front of the two bikers. Her white tie on top and dark blue jeans was pretty much a neon sign for men. Poor Tifa. Sora thought. Being unintentionally sexy must be hard on her sometimes. Okay, boys, you know the rules. First to make to the finish line gets bragging rights for a whole year, or until the next race. Sora and the second racer nodded. The two of them started their bikes. Tifa held out a white flag, held out three fingers, and lowered them one at a time, calling out each number as she lowered. Three. Sora revved his bike up and did a mental check to make sure his helmet was secure. Two. He turned his head and stared at the white line ahead of him. He had his eyes on the prize. One. There was a dead silence. The only sounds were the two revving bikes ready to tear off towards the finish line. Go! TV yelled, waving the white flag. Sora let go of the clutch and he shot forward down the dirt course. The dirt course was a straight path littered with endless hills, making it very dangerous to ride at full speeds for you to let fast while going over a hill. Well, it would hurt, a lot, but it was the danger that made Sora feel alive. Which would be very ironic if he died during the race. Anyway, it was the feeling of the wind against him, the thrill of being airborne, the feeling of success that brought a thrill almost as equal as tearing down Kairi Nomura a notch. Sora was not making an effort to go slow. He tore through the course despite nearly being thrown off twice. His competition, however, was making careful speed bursts and was falling behind. Oh man, this race is as good as mine. Sora thought as he approached the last hill. With the burst of speed, he shot up the hill and into the air. The burst of speed was strong enough to send him airborne. He kept his eyes focused ahead of him though, waiting to land and cross the finish line. Sora. Sora gasped for the voice that called out to him made his blood chill. He felt odd, dizzy in fact, which resulted in the following. As Sora's bike came close to the ground, the forward momentum was so great that he flipped over the handlebars. 
His helmet clad head slammed onto the front wheel and he landed on the ground. The glass on his visor shattered and his body bounced on the ground. The bike skidded to the side and so it rolled like a rag doll down the hill and slammed against a parked car with a sickening crunch. Sora felt heavy. He heard screams. He heard the people running over to him. He felt a pair of arms turn over and call his name. Tifa screamed and she pulled off his helmet and gasped. Sora's face was perfectly fine. Not a single cut, bruise was found on him. Sora opened his eyes and he gave a light smile. Hey Tifa, is the bike okay? Tifa bore the expression one gets when they had just been slapped in the face. The bike is fine, you crazy moron. <sighs> Tifa sighed. She stood up and assured everyone he was alright. Then she scooped low and she pulled Sora up, beginning a slow trek towards her car. By the time they got to her car and by the time Sora sat down, the dizziness he felt seemed to have disappeared. Tifa knelt over until she was eye level with Sora. How are you feeling? Sora looked back at her and he said, Um, I, I think I'm okay. Oh, good. Ow! What the, what the hell was that for? Ugh, for scaring me. For nearly dying. You crazy moron, you almost got yourself killed. Sora rubbed his cheek. Well, I'm okay, alright? Prior to the slap, I came out of the wreck just fine. Yeah, you did. Tifa tilted her head. Which is odd because, well, no offense, they normally would be peeling you off the ground now. I just got lucky, I guess. <laughs> Luck's got nothing to do with it. You have an angel looking out for you. Maybe. Sora muttered. At that moment, the sound of rolling thunder echoed. Sora and Tifa turned their heads to see the dark clouds beyond them. Or maybe it's something else. Sora frowned, and he swore for a moment that in his reflection from the windshield, he saw a skull leering at him. 